Good day to everyone. It's a great day to be an American, and it's a great day to be an entrepreneur. It's a great day to be a Christian. It's a great day to serve the Most High God. Uh, my name is Anthony Wayne Cooper. I'm here on behalf of my niece, Ray Michelle Thompson Cooper, and she's asked me to speak a little bit about my journey in life as an entrepreneur, as a black uh, business owner, uh, a father, uh, an economic system in America, and um, the justice system in America. And I'm the third child of five. Uh, born to Estelle Dolores Cooper and Maurice Otis Cooper, two awesome people, and that's part of the equation here. Um, I'm a father of two wonderful daughters, a grandfather to three outstanding, praise the Lord, grandkids. I am a husband to one wife for almost 36 years, and hopefully it'll be another 36 years after that. I served in the United States Army for 11 years out of my life. I also... Uh, uh, just retired from the federal government system as an air traffic controller for 38 years. Uh, but that's not what we're here to talk about. That's some of the things that make up uh, the process of my journey. Um, but it all began really from a, a, a loving parent standpoint. I w I'm blessed to have two great parents. Uh, the focus is on race, justice, and the economy. Um, I, I can say that... Uh, I have experienced uh, racism in, in my life, but it has not impacted me adversely in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Uh, my mother, she told me one thing, and, and she told me a lot of things, but one of the things she told me is to uh, uh, be good at what you do. No matter what it is that you do, be the best at it. And I applied that to my life. That was one of the, the watershed moments in my life. But through my journey in life, I learned that uh, a lot of what what we're doing in business as an entrepreneur uh, really is grounded in, in biblical ways. The word says, raise up a child in the way that he would go, and then when he is old, he will not depart. And building a great foundation. Uh, it says that um, if you build your house on sand, the winds will come and the rains will come, and it will destroy that home. And so you have to build it on a rock. You have to build it on a great foundation. And those are the things about business. You have to build your business on a great foundation. The Bible also speaks about uh, speaking to the dry bones, speaking life into existence. And so uh, I learned that you've always got to be motivated and you've always got to speak good things to yourself. For me, I've got to trust in God. That uh, over the time that I've been in business, and, and it has been greater than 40 years, um, over that time, I've, I've grown in the capacity to trust God and to know that uh, he will be able to direct my path. We have been successful in everything that we've done, and success is uh, measured differently. But uh, through our failures even, there have been great success because we were able to learn from those things. Book of Proverbs, it says, uh, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. But in all thy getting, it says, get an understanding. So we have to base the things that we're gonna be doing on knowledge. You've gotta be hungry for knowledge. And once you have the knowledge, no one can take that back from you. They can take away uh, your car, they can take away your house, but they can't take away your knowledge. And so in all you're getting, it says, get thee an understanding. Are there roadblocks? Sure, there are roadblocks. Are there hurdles? Sure, there are hurdles. That's all a part of the journey. It's all a part of the landscape of life and of business. Another one of the key points is mentorship. Uh, because you may be journeying out as a as an entrepreneur uh, and somebody new in the context of what you're doing, you've got to find somebody that you can look to and aspire to and to uh, uh, follow the path. The path is out there. You know, a lot of times we want to think we're building something new, but there's nothing new here on this planet under the sun. Everything that was here is here. It's the fact that how we put those elements together uh, allows us to... Uh, uh, build that thing that we're we're desirous of. The thing that you're doing, be passionate about. Know that uh, the passion brings energy. The passion brings focus. The passion brings a a, a depth. It brings a, a a relationship. It brings an intimacy. As an entrepreneur, I've probably been in business ever since I was in the uh, seventh grade. I used to sell candy out of my jacket. I it'd be summertime, and I have a trench coat on, and everybody knew that there's the candy man right there. And so uh, you got to know your product, you got to know your market, 
and you got to be able to supply your market with that product and you have to have an inventory of that. And so when I would sell candy, I literally would make uh, uh, probably $50 a day. I would make $50 a day because I knew that people wanted candy. Um, I, I also was a, a bag boy at the commissary. I would put people's uh, groceries into their uh, into the bags. And I learned how to bag the fastest. I learned how to uh, put the things in the right order. And I learned uh, how, to, how to greet people nicely. And the thing that I really learned is that people waited for me. It was a long line in the grocery store. And when you're in the grocery store, you want to get out of there. But people said, I want that guy to bag my bags. And, and so the thing was that I was a professional at what I did. And the thing that I did, I was the best that I could be at it. And I learned from others. And, and so one of the key things here is learn from others the things that you like. Take those things and then melt it into what you're going to be doing and what you do and make it the best. And people will, will, will gravitate towards you. In, in all the businesses that I've been a part of, I have never, I have never not strived to be my best and, and being black was never a stepping uh, a problem. Um, the economy, uh, you know, the economy is what the economy is, you know, and you just got to deal with that. Um, you know, you talk about justice or injustice as far as business was concerned. I, because I was in love with what I did and I always wanted to provide the best for people, um, I was hungry and they gravitated towards that. I brought energy, I brought excitement, I brought fun, um, I brought everything that I had to the table and it was rewarded. Um, and so one of the things I would say to anybody out there that's listening to this, whatever it is that you're doing, put all that you can be in there and, and then identify your weaknesses and make your weaknesses your strengths and identify your strengths and make your strengths your pillars. And then I, I think you'll find great success. My parents uh, were, were very key to my success. They passed along things to me and, and it was repetitive. My dad would say the same thing to me over and over and over again. And I didn't get a lot of it until I was 27 years old. You know, it was like, oh God, he's saying it again. Oh God, he's saying it again. But it was repetition. And that's the repetition that causes it to be, to be engraved engraved in who you are. And so he always spoke strong words. And, and a lot of it was like, oh my goodness, dude, you're beating me up with some stuff, but it was good medicine. And then my mother, she always spoke, you know, she always was in love with my success. She always was part of, Tony, be the best you can be. Uh, uh, can you do better? Uh, just be passionate and love what you do. And, and, um, and so the two of them together brought me to a place where I've always said two things to my daughters. If they could get anything out of it, they would always say, my dad said, don't be afraid to be great and do what you have to do so that you can do what you want to do. Um, and you, you could ask them, what are the things that your dad said to you? And I always say to them, don't be afraid to be great and do what you have to do so that you can do what you want to do. There's a season. Um, and so be in your season and know your season. And when your season is there, it is time for you to uh, reap the rewards. But know in the interim time, when it's not yet your season, plant the seeds. It's the harvest that you're looking for. Have an expectation of the harvest. Speaking on race, and um, I, I don't know if it's racial injustice or the difficulties of being black and in business. Uh, for me, being, being black and living, I, I, I don't have a lot of problems with that. I haven't experienced that. And then things that, that may have had negative overtones, you know, with, with the devil meant for evil, God turned around for my good, you know. So, so um, you know, I, I just stay focused. I understand where, I, where I'm going. I know where I want to be. God has given me a vision for it. And, um, you know, in the world, they call it the business plan. Write your business plan down and follow your business plan. And then, then 
of course, it's a living document and change it. But in the word of God, it talks about write your vision down on the tables that he that see it will run with it. And though it may tarry, it will happen, you know. And so, you know, everything in the Bible has been, um, um, it's have foundation in life and in business and in relationships, you know. And so I would say to each and every one of you there, know your word and then know how to apply your word and know where your word applies. Fear is a good thing. You know, fear will separate you from fear, will motivate you and push you towards. It'll have you run out of a hot building because you're afraid that you're going to get burned, you know. And so so fear is is not so much a negative connotation. Uh, when people say be fearless, like a lion, rawr, you know, but a lion don't go around messing with elephants. So know your, know your place as far as the fear is concerned. I'd like to talk to you about preparation. Uh, preparation is it. Uh, no athlete, and I use the, the analogy about an athlete, they don't go just get out there and run the race. You know, they just don't come out of the stands and run the race. They have prepared for years and years and years. And so the preparation, the practice, the uh, preparedness is so that when you get into the arena, uh, even though you've got competition to your left, competition to your right, and that competition could be economic pressures, that competition could be uh, racial injustice, that competition could be a lack of money, you know, you're in the lane with those things, you know, and because you were prepared, you know, you're ready to run this race. And so uh, preparedness is one of the key factors of anything that you want to do. Just don't go out there and, and say, you know, because I have, I love to do this or because I have a, I think I have a talent for that. It, nothing beats preparation. Know your value. Know what's valuable to you. How valuable is this process to you? You're not an island. It takes a whole team of individuals together build a good team. Understand that uh, if you're a great photographer, uh, you might not be a great accountant. And so find somebody who can do the accounting. Be humble enough to know that, uh, you know, teamwork makes the dream work. Humility, my mother shared that with me. Uh, she said, Tony, don't pat yourself on the back. Let your work do the speaking for you and other people will, um, uh, give you the accolades and so me and my wife we owned uh we own uh, mobile shave ice and caribbean ice business uh some of the sweetest desserts it's better than ice cream nobody leaves our service not happy because they've got a wonderful cold treat you know and so for for us as we go forward all the things that we learn in life through life through the bible through our experiences previous to this and other businesses we apply now. It's like a three-layered cake. You know, you, you make the cake and you put the first layer of cake on and then you put the icing on and and it's a cake. That's a cake right there, but it's not finished because it's a three-layered cake. So you take the second layer, you put the second layer on, you put the icing on top of that and you make it all beautiful and everything else. But the finished product is not yet. It's a three-layered cake, but the two-layered cake, it's still a cake. And then life gives you that other layer. And so you put the other layer on and then you put the icing on and now it's a three layered cake. So everything that you learn from your first layer, you duplicate it in your second layer, you duplicate it in your third layer, and then you get to cut the cake. I could bring it to this close. We're talking about in search of shalom. Uh, we're talking about in search of peace. I say all that to say this. It is nothing but the grace of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, and the love of Jesus Christ, who I lean on to make all things that I desire to have uh, come to pass. And, and I keep into perspective, it's not my will, but it is his will. And then when I do his will, his will aligns me with my will. And so the two become one. And so uh, I'm excited. I hope you guys got something out of this. Never forget, never forget, never forget who loves you, baby.